exam two, question two, C++ version. So we want to do class factorial of an x, turns x factorial, zero factorial is one, etc., etc., etc. We won't worry about the Python one because we're not doing it in Python right now. So let's make a new file. Let's save it as exam exam two dot cpp. And let's do include IO stream. Let's uh, let's be a little nicer here. And do a little bit better on less laziness of using namespaces incorrectly. Um, again, and main. Oops. Dealing with keyboard problems. Um, again, classic. Uh, let's define, what did it say? It said it was returning ints. Didn't say, so if we're in C++, we could use an unsigned long. Let's just use unsigned long, it's fine. Um, factorial, which receives an integer x. Making an unsigned long so it can return bigger values and you can't have a negative value coming out of factorial. Um, so we could actually specify that we can't have a negative coming in either. It's unsigned and x coming in. So we are assuming non-negative input. You could put that in your, then I won't check it when checking your exam. Um, let's just have it return something. Let's return our favorite 42. And then we'll check. So let's um, let's have an unsigned unsing unsigned long uh, number is let's call factorial of five, and then we will print out that number. That should compile, right? Let's try. G plus plus exam two compiles and it runs and it returns 42. Excellent, that's what we expected because we put 42 there. So let's fix this then. So there's two solutions to factorial. We can think of factorial of a number as being that number times the number previous times the number previous times the number previous all the way down to one, right? So it can be, or think of it the other way around, flip it, one times two times three times four all the way up to times x. And since we're doing times, 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 times over again, it sounds like a loop. Or we could do it in a recursive manner, which is the factorial of zero is one. And the factorial for any other positive integer is equal to that integer times the previous factorial. So the factorial of five would be the factorial of four times five. The factorial of four would be the factorial of three times four, etc., etc. So I'm a big fan of recursion, so let's just do it that way to start. So if the x is equal to zero, then we're going to return one. And if it's not equal to zero, then it must be greater than zero because it can't be less than zero because unsigned. Uh, we're going to return x multiplied by the factorial of the previous value. And the previous value of x is x minus 1. Boom. But it's really that simple, Ken? Yeah, it's really that simple. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to return there and I'm going to return there. There's no worries about it never returning because there's an if and we return in both cases. Compile run. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Okay, cool. So if we actually try it with 6, it should be 720, right? Cool, works. All right, so that's one solution. Let's try a different solution. Let's do it with that loop that everyone loved. So we're going to go 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 all the way up to x. So we're going to multiply. We're going to accumulate some the one times the two so i need an accumulator so i'm going to have an accumulator which is an unsigned long uh, 
the accumulator and I'm going to start it with one because the identity of multiplication is one. All right, so, uh, so I'm going to do with that number times the value. So I just got to keep doing this. Accumulator is accumulator times some value, some value, and I got to keep doing it starting at 1, v starts at 1, and v goes all the way up to and including x. So that smells like a loop to me. And so v starts at 1, and while v is less than or equal to that x, and each time v goes up by 1, we're going to do oops, auto insert. We're going to do that. So this loop's going to go around and around and around each time. And when it's finished, we're going to return the accumulator. Now what happens if 0 comes in? If 0 comes in, then the accumulator's got a 1 in it. And we start at v is 1. v is not less than or equal to 0, so it doesn't do this at all. So that works. Huh, should work. Let's try it. Compile, run, bingo. That's number 2.